something, this is what we ask you to do so that these guys don't get so excited because sometimes that uh, whole, yeah. So, again, veteran, okay. yeah. did you enjoy what you saw here today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, look. Good. Good. Our closing message, but don't leave because after we're done, actually Jeff is going to talk too. So I'm just going to do our closing message, and then Jeff's going to talk. Don't nobody leave. But I like to tell you that if you enjoyed what you saw here today, then it's up to each and every one of you, and I mean every one of you, to do things starting right now to be sure that there's an environment where animals like this in the future. What do I mean? Yeah, that same stuff you hear over and over and over. Recycle, reduce, reuse. You hear that, it's like, ah, oh, stop, no more. Well, you hear it because it's important. You hear it because it's something you need to do. And it's easy to do. Turn off the lights, pick up litter. Everybody can do something, and we all need to. And we've got to not just talk about it, we have to actually do it. Oh yeah, I, I would like to, but uh, 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 do it. I'm going to leave you guys with three L's. Well, normally I teach this to kids, but I'm sure most of you probably have kids or no kids, so now you can teach them the three L's. The three L's are, when you're out and about enjoying nature, and you should, it's there for you. Respect it, but enjoy it. The three L's are, first L, look. Look, ooh, something really neat right there. Second L, learn, learn from it. Let it pick it up if it's safe for you and whatever it is. Learn from it. Wow, that's pretty neat. And then finally, yeah, leave it. Why would you want to leave it if it was so good? Well, I'll tell you some several reasons. One, one say it's a bird of prey feather, an eagle feather. If you picked up that eagle feather and take that home and you're caught. Two years in jail, $10,000 fine. Unless you have a permit like we do, or you're a Native American with a federally recognized tribe, you're registered with that tribe, then you can have it. <coughs> Just an ordinary person, look, learn, wait, you can't have that. There's another reason. It might be useful, whatever it is, for an animal to use in, say, nesting material or whatever. So. <coughs> look at it and move it so the animal can enjoy it. It might be the animal. You know, your kid picks up a, something looks like a little rock or something and then legs are crawling out of it on the beach. Yeah, there's an animal in there. You don't want to take that home and it just dies and stinks up the room. So, weird. And then just, just being a decent human being. If you are walking along and you see something going, you pick it up take it home, then when everybody else goes down that same trail, they don't get the opportunity to see it. You only got to see that. So look, learn, and leave. And I thought, even though you're adults, and you should do this for kids, I'm going to have you guys say it. I want you to do, girls, look, learn, leave. Look, learn, leave. Boy. Look, learn, leave.
But um, as far as these guys covered everything pretty well as far as the biology and stuff with these guys. So uh, I'm going to talk just a little bit, but we're going to questions and stuff if you guys got so She always tends to bring out a lot of questions. You know? She's the one. We had an email that went out, and then there's a book written about it and stuff like that. So she's she still gets the email. I got a note for an interview today this morning, and it's still going on. So she's a funny bird. <coughs> So she's done probably 30 programs a year for the last 13 years. So she's, you know, she's getting around. She's been on, she's been on Good Morning America a while back. Not for a story on her, though. It's just kind of back. <coughs> We're good. Okay, cool. So David touched, he, he, he mentioned the thing about their monocular and binocular vision. And they have, they have these indentations in their eyes, which actually make that happen. They're called phobias. There's two of them. And one is for monocular and binocular. So here's the queen bee. She's a small girl. But she's quite vocal. She really likes to meet. She's got to say, everybody, hey, look at me. I thought she was dancing. Pardon? I thought she was dancing. Well, it could be. I guess it's how you interpret it. But it's basically an attention getter. You know, she's a totally different bird if you take her out of her flight at the wildlife center. She's just totally just a lot, a lot of times uncooperative. You get her in front of a crowd or like a TV camera or something, and she's very much different. <laughs> now she weighs, she's a small girl. She's about a 10 pound bird. And if you guys want to get an idea of what holding just a 10 pound bird is like, go home and take a 10 pound sack of flour or sugar. Put your arm at the right angle and set it there and stand. <laughs> I guarantee you, within a two or three minutes, your arm's going to be shaking. You don't use those muscles. Now, don't imagine the bird like that doing what you just did there. It generates quite a bit of power. Right? Yeah. So, you know, you get your butt kicked on a regular basis. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> See, and if, if you want to turn slowly around, you can see her damaged wing. Sometimes you wrap it over her shoulder just like she's doing this. Oh. So that kind of tells us she likes her. Or that she's releasing one of them. <laughs> and the, with her, her being 14, you notice her eyes still haven't changed yet. They're, they're still very light. In fact, Ashkotay's eyes are changing faster than hers. She's twice her age. So. And she's still got a little black spot on her head. I don't know that her black spot is ever going And this bird is very, very finicky. Sometimes when it gets cold, she won't eat it all. She's kind of got to learn behavior that if the food's there, nobody's going to take it from me, so I'll just eat it whenever I want. <laughs> and she can do that too. She'll take everybody with me. But her favorite food also is bunnies, just like us. The eagles love little bunnies in the spring. Because a lot of times they just have a dog will kill them. We don't eat them live. But it's like, oh man, you can a bunny in front of her no matter how much she's eating, my eyes go. That would be like a little kid. I'm going to always send on. So that, as I'm going along, if you guys got questions, just like raise your hand or something like that. We'll be happy to Way in the back. Do you ever try to breed? Uh, no, we're not a breeding detective. facility. So we don't breed anything there other than rats and mice. Yes. Is her head a little different shaped than the other one? It looks really tall. Do hers? Mm -hmm. um, no, sometimes she'll have her crown up, so it'll look a little bit bigger, but now they're pretty much the same size. But she is the most beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, which of the species are the most friendly to you guys as you take care of them? And the, does it vary no, within the species the very much? probably the wrong word. You know, they, they kind of tolerate us, and you do bond with them. But it's not friendly like a dog kind of friendly. You know, she can, she can be, and, and very much like her right now, she's probably <coughs> in Cindy like that, and you can see these birds work like that. But I wouldn't call it friendly so much as a bonding uh, experience with them. Mm -hmm. Did I see another hand? No. What's your question? <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty big. You want, how many feathers does she have? Anybody know how many feathers an eagle has? I think I heard, remember from last year, 7,000 or something? Very good, very good. Wow. wow. 
back for your second year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little more rock doves we have flying around. Does everybody yeah. got pigeons? Does he have like 10,000 pigeons? Really? Yeah. I mean, these guys don't use very much. Yeah. Uh -huh. Besides losing an eye. <laughs> no, there. You know, actually, it's a level of trust, and the birds pick the person they want to work with. Really, I mean, other people can try and work with them. I mean, not this one. She's really nasty. I, I had somebody else at one point try to work with, just bit her in the face. That's not working. But um, no, there. Nothing's ever happened that I know of. Anybody lose an eye? No, there. There's a lot of trust, you know, with them. I mean, I am making fun, but there is a lot of trust in these birds, and we get asked that question a lot. So, no, they're very good. The only time you get blood drawn is sometimes with the talon or something like that. When they get excited and they're just like going to push off on you or something, they're not trying to hurt you. They're just like pushing you. Everybody gets stuck. If you work with these birds long enough, you're going to get stuck. So, when they when they move from the dark phase to the white phase at four to five years, from what I understand, do they lose all their feathers and then get the white head and the white feathers? Or? No, she started, her head changed about 70% at about three and a half years old. And they, they molt every spring and summer, so it's like if you go up there in August and the eagle flights, it's looks like cotton all over the, all over the net. They oh. lose all that, but they don't lose it all. There's an email that goes around there talking about how the, at 30 years or whatever it is, it goes up to rock. And, Pulls off its talons and loses yeah, all its feathers. I've seen that. Yeah, I've been asked about that so many times. No, not true. No. Yes. Do they mate in midair? No. They mate in the nest. When you're in the midair, the whole talon thing, that's like a test of either a test of strength or a territory dispute. Uh, what kind of a. Is Fletcher's stone? It took off. Well, there was these two birds that were pellet cups and they yeah. well, hit the ground. A hell of a way to mate, huh? <laughs> 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 and then they took off in Sometimes, depending on the break and you know where it is and how bad it is, you know, but like Ashkete, she can fly a little bit, but not anywhere near enough to go free. She can fly from one end of flight to the other. And this one here flies like a rock, this one. <laughs> but she can jump a little bit. But yeah, not, not when they're really severe, but they're small enough, yes. Good. Uh, what happens to them physically in old age? You know, pretty much like us, they get arthritis and they get cranky. And <laughs> do they actually ever bald? I'm sorry? Do they ever go bald? Like, do the men ever go bald? No. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Bald eagle. You know what the actual English definition is? It means white. whitehead. In old English bald means whitehead. So in the landscape, they turn this on. That's what they call it, bald eagle. I saw another hand somewhere. Now it's down. Pardon? Now the bottom of their feet here. These these guys that Kevin talked about earlier. These are fishermen. And so the bottom of these toes under here is like really, really rough sandpaper. They're called spicules. So it's like if you ever try to pick a fish up with your bare hands, it just squirts away. And these guys, they don't have to pierce them. They just do these talents to you. You just grab them with the toe. How about this one? Is this one? <laughs> you know, but she, the only fish she actually likes is trout. She loves trout. Salmon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you guys still at Liberty? We never had a bird called Liberty. Well, I thought we had a bird Liberty a few years ago that uh, one of the uh, handlers had cancer and he, the bird detected it. No. Um, we have freedom. We never had a bird called Liberty. What is that other book? That's the kind of Jackie's Wild Seattle is based on us. Oh, yeah. Really? And that's what they named freedom in the book because it was fiction so they couldn't use the real name even for the bird I guess. So Liberty is freedom in Jackie's Wild Seattle. Me and Crazy Bob are the same person. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had an ad to keep it all secret. <laughs> but freedom, her kind of part her story in mind is in a book I wrote a couple years ago and it's called An Eagle Named Freedom. And there is it does touch on cancer in there. 
where when she was very young, she came in and I said both wings were broken and she was very emaciated on her belly. When she came in, we had a carrier about this size, the top off and it's filled with shredded newspaper and so they could poop laying down. And anyway, she was a tube bed for a little bit and then she started eating on her own. <coughs> but she wouldn't stand up for weeks and weeks and weeks. So, so I think seven weeks we were into her laying on her belly in one of these. Um, Kay, who, Kay Baxter, who found this Harvey, who's long, no longer with us. Her, myself, and a couple other people. Um, I don't remember who all was there, but we were talking about it, and it was basically, we decided to give this bird another week. If she couldn't stand up in a week, then we were going to have to euthanize her. <coughs> that's no way for an eagle to die just laying on its belly. And it, you know, two months like that, it's just not going to Every day I called and checked on her, and she was down on her belly the whole time. So the day, uh, Friday was the cutoff day. So I get up there Thursday afternoon. And um, I walk in, walk in the clinic, and I uh, walk around the corner to see if she's still on her belly. And she had been, she was standing up in the dowel cage. She was kind of peeking around the corner because she could hear me coming. And so we had a little bonding moment through that, you know, watching her stand up and decide to make the choice to live. It was pretty cool. You know? And then uh, Kay said to me, she goes, why don't you go up train her? And I go, great. How do I do that? So, basically, it was just a, the way Kay showed everybody how to train these birds. We don't do it with food like falconers. We just do it. We ask them. That's what we do. And she's never been trained with food. None of these birds. Louie at one time was a little bit, but not much. So I just stick the glove in there and she'd hop on and we just got a routine working and stuff like that. And then I started doing programs with her. Uh, and then in the spring of 2000, I got diagnosed with non Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I had to do eight months of chemo, you know, and you lose all your hair, and you're dressed like a pirate, and all that kind of stuff. You don't have any eyebrows, which is very strange. It's kind of nice, though. No hair is in and out of the shower really quick. <laughs> and so, um, eight months of chemo, and then the Cold. last. Uh, Cold in the winter. Pardon? Cold in the winter. Yeah, you got to wear good band -aids. And so after my last uh, bout of chemo, I went back in to get checked and the cancer was gone and went up to the wildlife center and took her out for a walk and it was like the Thanksgiving of 2000. So it was one of those just perfect November cold rainy days. And we just stood out front and she just wrapped both of her wings around. And that's the only time she's ever done that. And so I sent an email to a friend of mine who's since died about that and she sent it out to like her email list, was, which was like this international list. I was just up there. That's how that all went viral, and I mean, I, I still have a couple of thousand unread emails that I just never get to. But uh, she's a pretty famous bird. Are there any other questions? Really, that's it for this whole Eagle crowd? Surprise. Why you got it? Okay. What is the name of the top of the head? She can either be agitated or interested. You can tell a lot by their body language when you work with them. But if you see her, the top of her crown is up right here, but her body, the rest of her body language is really relaxed. So she's just watching what's going on. She's not feeling threatened or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. The right look. Which, when I started with her, all, almost all falconers and raptor hands are always the left hand. And you notice she's on the right hand. The very first program I did with her, I had her on the left hand, and she spun around the wrong way, and I couldn't get her turned around. And I happened to have two gloves with that. I'm sitting there looking at it going, why is that? And then it dawned on me, it's like, in the wild, they protect, if they're wounded, they protect that. They try to hide it. So this wing over here, that's the one that she can't open all the way. like to close. So as soon as I put her on the right-hand glove, she's perfect. She's perfect. So it's perfect as she can get, right? <laughs> Isn't, isn't there something about this when they're with their talents they lost <coughs> onto something and they can't release it or no that's an old wives tale just like that email okay they have and there's tendons they go through their feet right here it's like a little ratchet and it locks down so when they close like that they just drop that in there and it locks and maybe just open it just like you open your hands when that happens to these guys they just don't want to let go and sometimes it'll kill them if they got a fish or something in the river and they really want it and they'll get past the point of return right it'll pull yeah. them under yeah, I've heard other things where they have to push off stuff to actually open their feet. It's not. I mean, she can open and close them like that will. Yes? Um, how territorial are they as far as, like, during nesting season and stuff? And do the Goldens and the and the bald eagles mix and share territory? 
No, not usually because they're, they're those two birds. Their diet is different, so they're not going to do that. And it's really food based as far as their territories. If there's been eagle territories like a mile, and there'll be nests within a mile. But as long as there's enough food, they can kind of coexist. Sure. Uh, sometimes it happens like y'all you'll see golden and balls together, especially in the winter when food isn't really that easy to get. It might be on a carcass or something. You could see a mix. But it's not Sometimes the ball will open up frozen salmon, those guys. The stellar is here. Yes? Applause all you guys for your dedication to these animals. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was a labor of love. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you'd have to ask her that, but it's kind of like payback, you know? It's a good question. I call it like the circle of healing. Giving him a hug. Did your mom give you a hug? <laughs> Rabbits alive when they're fed? No, the only time we feed live is the juveniles that we have to hunt before they get released. Yeah. None of these birds don't get live. They don't yeah. need them. Yeah. A lot of carrying here. Uh, is that it? Thank you guys for coming. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah. They weigh, when the eagle hatches, it weighs about as much as a stick of butter. <laughs> but in three months, they're like, now, you're supposed to give it a that one.